Hello, welcome to our student loan uh, presentation uh, titled Navient School Misconduct Discharge, held by the City Bar Justice Center. My name is Ramona Morrell. I am the director of the Consumer Bankruptcy Project at the City Bar Justice Center. Um, today's presentation is made possible with funds uh, and in collaboration with the Education uh, Debt Consumer Assistance Program, also known as EDCAP. Uh, so today we will explore Navient's school misconduct discharge. Uh, now this program by Navient will allow certain uh, student loan borrowers uh, with private student loans that are held by Navient to apply for loan discharges based on school misconduct. And to be clear, um, the program is only available to those student loan borrowers who have private Navient student loans. So you must have taken out a student loan, a private student loan with Navient, and you must have taken it out to attend and to pay for a predatory, not a uh, predatory for-profit school that engage in misconduct or misled or lied to you. Um, and in order uh, to get the discharge, borrowers will need to complete and submit a comprehensive application to have a shot at approval. Um, and so let's you know, unpack this uh, and uh, figure out what are the ways to be able to apply? What are the steps? What are the processes to uh, apply for this school misconduct discharge on Navient private student loans? Um, just a little bit of background information about Navient and just a couple of things that I think that, you know, you should be aware of is that, and many of us already know is that Navient is a, is a private corporation. Um, it is a student loan lender, student loan servicer, and it is one of the largest owners of private student loan debt. Now, Navient was formed in 2014 and after, as part of Sally May and after Sally May split, it became Navient and Sally May Bank, so two very different um, entities. And you might have received um, some statements or have gotten notifications from Navient about collecting on a student loan debt. And you're not, and some people have, you know, private student loans with Navient. Others have federal student loans that Navient services because aside from their own private student loan portfolio, um, Navient also works with the Department of Education to um, uh, collect and to prod to service federal student loan debts. Now, Navient is not the owner of the federal student loan debts. Instead, it's the Department of Education. And I bring this up because you might have um, student loans held by, if you have student loans held by Navient, you may not even know if those are federal student loans that are guaranteed by the Department of Education or they're private student loans with Navient or a, maybe a mix of both. Some people have federal and private student loans. So it's really important that you actually try to determine and figure out what types of student loans you have with Navient so that you'll know what programs um, will be applied or are eligible for discharge um, as well as what the processes are and what where to submit your application. So once you've determined that, you can move forward with your application. And so once you know that Navient truly holds uh, a private student loan in which you're responsible uh, to and, and have an obligation to repay, uh, but that you have attended a for-profit school that was predatory, that misled you, that engaged in misconduct, then you know you can apply for this program. And in order uh, to apply for the program, you do have to do it through an application. To kind of get an understanding of the school misconduct discharge, because this is the first time that Navient is doing this, um, and to understand the process and what it does it mean to be um, or to meet the criteria for school misconduct discharge, you should understand what the borrower defense to repayment is, which is a federal program that is uh, in, that has been implemented by the Department of, of Education. So Navient's own program is actually very similar to the federal programs, BDR, that's what we call the borrower defense to repayment, BDR, um, and meeting the criteria is quite similar. Um, so just the, let me just back up a little bit about the school misconduct discharge from Navient. So they created this, but haven't actually publicized it, right? And so there's not a lot of information, a lot of instructions about what would qualify a student loan borrower for this for this BDR, this this 
you know, Navient's equivalent of the BDR. And so we certainly know that it is similar to the federal government's own program. And in order to, um, and that the criteria is really similar in terms of being able to meet the qualification. The, the differences are that under the federal BDR, borrowers with the federal loans who attended a school that was defraud that defrauded them, um, they are able to actually do this in a more streamlined way. The federal government has an application. There's a streamlined process. Uh, you already know who to submit it to, and they quickly process that 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 application. And under the uh, federal BDR, it's a very, very clear instructions. The borrower must show, um, must provide information about the school's name and the program of study. They must. Um, provide information on the enrollment dates that the borrower attended the school and submit documentation to support why the borrower believes that they qualify for BDR. And they must also demonstrate the harm that was suffered. You know, how did, uh, how did the school, you know, mislead uh, the borrower and the kind of uh, harm they suffered from that misrepresentation. So that's the federal BDR. And so Navian's school misconduct discharge is really similar to that. And student loan borrowers have to uh, put in an application uh, showing um, that uh, they are seeking relief of their private student loans on the basis that their school was involved in misconduct. Um, and they are required to include documentation that supports that belief and demonstrate the harm that the borrower su suffered. So very similar to the federal government's own defense to repayment program. Um, unlike the federal BDR, getting this type of discharge from Navient is not gonna be easy. You know, First of all, the application is not easily accessible. You do have to contact Navient to get a copy of that application. Um, and it's nowhere to be found on the internet, um, you know, from Navient's website. If you go to their website and you try to search it, you're not gonna be able to get it. You actually have to call them and they will uh, send you, uh, a, you know, a copy of that application. Um, also, Navient seems to be looking to discharge outstanding loans that pay directly the school the borrower is alleging for BDR. So Navient had to had been the lender who provided those funds to pay directly that predatory school. So if you refinanced your loan um, from Navient to another lender, it will likely not qualify for the discharge. Similarly, if you refinance from a lender into Navient, then it's possible that you will not qualify for the discharge because of the refinance. The refinance didn't actually pay the school directly. So I, I you know, be aware of that. Now, what constitutes uh, misconduct? Um, well, the school engaged in untruthful or misleading statements uh, while trying to convince the borrower to enroll or remain enrolled is a form of misconduct. So um, let me give you an example. Let's say that the school made a guarantee of employment uh, by attending by um, attending the school, uh, said that if you attended the program, uh, you would be guaranteed a, a certain type of employment, and then that didn't happen. Or um, if they made misleading statements about the cost of the program or the availability of financial aid, all of that um, to convince you to enroll or to remain enrolled in the school is a form of conduct. Um, another form of conduct is if the school concealed, hid, or omitted certain information uh, that would have been important to your decision to enroll or to remain enrolled. So in addition to the misleading statements I mentioned, something like the failure to tell borrower that certain factors such as a criminal record uh, would prevent the borrower from meeting employment requirements in the field of study for which the par borrower was attending school. That's a form of misconduct. Other types of misconduct uh, involve aggressive and deceptive recruitment tactics, uh, failure to perform the contractual obligations. Um, and even in some cases, if there's a lawsuit against, or there's or there has been a lawsuit against the school for misconduct, that may qualify the borrower for this type of uh, forgiveness program. So what are the steps to apply for Navient's BDR um, or uh, uh, misconduct uh, discharge program? Well, the first thing is to obtain an application from Navient. And as I mentioned, there is no 
Um, you can go to Navient's website and you can Google it on Navient's website. You will not find the application. You actually have to call uh, Navient's Office of Consumer Advocate at 888-545-4199, extension 998214, uh, to uh, request a school misconduct discharge application or email them at advocate at navient.com. So again, you have to be really proactive and have to request these uh, the application. Um, because Navient does not have it easily accessible, the Project on Predatory Student Lending, which is a uh, nonprofit advocacy group, has done us the favor of publishing Navient's application form. So you can actually get it from that group. And you can do that by going to www.ppsl.org. Um, if you call Navient and they refuse to provide you with an application, then you should file a complaint with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which is a federal agency in charge of supervising financial institutions and enforcing consumer rights. Um, so you can do that again with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau or CFPB. Now, once you've gotten the application, uh, you want to make sure that you put in all the right information. So the application is going to ask you for a lot of information and you want to be as detailed as possible. In your application, you want to make sure that you explain how the school misled you, defrauded you, or lied to you, and why you are entitled to the relief. So you should include details such as the dates of attendance. That's really important. Um, you're going to have to go back um, to your emails, um, documents, uh, jog your memory, but a lot of information is gonna have to be in this application. You also wanna include the student loan balances that were owed, the total costs that you currently owe, um, and provide an explanation of how the school failed to deliver what they promised regarding the education received. So they promised and guaranteed that you would get a job at a specific, in a specific type of field, you completed that certification and that did not happen then that is something that needs to go into your application. You also want to gather any supporting document that will show that there have been claims or findings uh, from governmental agencies against the school um, and that they found that the school had engaged in some kind of misconduct. So some examples, and you see one right here on the right uh, to the deck, but some examples could be uh, um, a copy of a DOE public announcement of the school related, uh, of the school misconduct related group. So you would go to www.ed backslash news and in the search engine, type in borrower defense claims, and you will see all of the archived announcements of the Department of Education's findings and agreements um, that certain schools committed misconduct, they engaged in the type of misconduct that resulted in the borrowers who attended those schools uh, to have their student loans discharged. So here's an example of the Marinello schools for beauty school borrowers um, who received a discharge, the, the borrowers received a discharge based on their borrower defense findings and that Marinello schools uh, did engage in misconduct. So an example like this, you go online, you look for it, you say you print it out as a PDF and you attach it to your application. If you have federal student loans that uh, you've had discharged as a result of, of school misconduct, provide a copy of the notice from the Department of Education approving you for that discharge and attach it to your application. Um, also note that in January of 2022, Navient had entered into a settlement with 39 state attorney generals that has sued um, Navient uh, regarding its lending practices with for-profit schools. And so in 2022, Navient had entered into a settlement um, and the attorney generals pretty much outlined which schools they were suing for. So because of the settlement, um, you, if you attended any one of these schools, so let's say you attended Kaplan University um, or um, University of Phoenix, you know, I've heard of these on, on, on the uh, commercials on television. Um, so if you attended any of these, you can point to Navient's 
um, AG settlement and mention in your application that you attended one of those schools and do not forget to list the dates of attendance. Um, you can also, a good tip is to also include any public information about any lawsuits, enforcement actions, and investigations related to the predatory, predatory school. So one really good resource would be the um, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's website, consumerfinance.gov, because again, they're an agency um, that oversees some of these enforcement actions. Um, and if the, uh, the CFPB uh, sued one of those schools or took enforcement actions against the school or even investigated a predatory school from their website, you will be able uh, to see this. You can, uh, again, print or download that information, um, and then you can cite those cases. You can provide that documentation and proof of that with your application. Um, and finally, you want to include any original documentation from the school that includes proof of misrepresentation, deceptive recruitment tactics, or substantial misconduct. So some examples would include any enrollment agreements that you have. Hopefully you still have those. You will have to probably through your emails or find ways to get a copy of that, but an enrollment agreement is very helpful. Any financial aid claims, recruiter statements, or job placement claims would be a plus. Um, and so one good tip to find that additional information or proof is to do a Google search. Maybe you could find some old commercials in YouTube or any relevant ads or articles that you can provide uh, uh, this kind of proof with your application. And just, you know, talking a little bit about the application itself, as you can see, this is all on you. The burden falls on the borrower to prove all of these things, even when, let's say, you attended a school that, uh, you know, from that that's listed in that Navian settlement, the burden still falls on you, unfortunately. Navian's not going to go ahead and identify the students themselves. So you you know, you know, have to provide all this uh, proof in your application. And the more information you provide to prove your point, um, the better chances of getting the discharge. Um, the application itself is not, if you receive it from Navian, it's not uh, fillable. Uh, so you can try to make it a fillable form by creating, by, converting it into an Adobe form, uh, Adobe Acrobat form, and then typing very neatly uh, the information. So the application has to also be legible um, and you have to provide a lot of information. So you wanna make sure that there are no questions as to what um, information's in the application you provided. Once you've done that, you've gotten your application, you filled it out, you have all of your supporting documentation, you go ahead and then submit it to Navian uh, by mail or by submitting it to the website that I mentioned earlier at advocate at navian.com. So a few tips, um, if there's no response from Navian after you've submitted your application, if there's no response after 30 days, you should contact them to find out what's the holdup. But if you get still no response, no information, then you should file a complaint with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And in your complaint, you want to include the copy of your application and all of the documents um, and attachments that you have put together. Uh, and then note that you submitted your application and haven't received a response and it's been more than 30 days. The same thing if they didn't, if Navian denies your application, do the same thing, file your complaint with CFPB and provide the application and supporting documents. Um, and then, you know, worst case scenario, contact Navian. It doesn't hurt to contact them and ask why you were denied um, and what additional information or documents you need to submit for reconsideration. If they won't reconsider or give you any clear answers as to why you were denied or what additional information or documents were needed, file your complaint with the CFPB. Before, um, you know, one, just, just a little bit of a caveat, um, you know, it would be really remiss of me if not, if I didn't mention this. Um, typically, when a private student loan is discharged, you know, let's say you've gotten your application, filled it out, submitted it in Navian, approves it. Great, wonderful. You are no longer responsible and have an obligation to pay back that student loan debt. But typically when student loan debts, private student loan debts are discharged by the lender, the borrower may incur a tax penalty, a tax debt. What that means is that it is possible, and, and I just want to mention it as a possibility so that you are aware of this, it is possible that you could get a 1099 
showing that that debt was forgiven and that you received the benefit of that loan. So you will have to submit that with your taxes as if it were income received. Um, and, you know, I suggest that if you get that 1099, you don't ignore it because you will have to pay taxes on it. And there may be ways, some exceptions for you not to uh, have that tax, penal tax penalty or pay taxes. And when you receive that 1099, do speak to a tax accountant about your options. But I wanna give you a heads up about that because it is possible that you can get that both from the IRS, you must file it on your federal taxes and on your state taxes um, and see if there are any exceptions to that. All right, so I, you know, the application and the possibility of getting a discharge, uh, filling out the application might be difficult, and the possibility of getting a discharge um, is, you know, not 100%. There's no guarantee, and it may be an uphill battle, but it is worth trying, and it is worth submitting your application uh, to Navient, uh, as well as spreading the word to other individuals who have private student loans with Navient and who had attended a predatory for profit school, it is worth um, uh, doing it if you can get from under this uh, burdensome student loan debt. Uh, and if you have any questions after today, certainly please feel free to reach out to us at the Justice Center. Our number is on the screen. It's 212-382-6707. Or you can email us at studentloans at nycbar.org. Um, I hope you found this presentation very helpful. And if you are going to proceed with your application for a discharge um, for school misconduct with your private Navient student loans, I wish you the best of luck and much success. Thank you and goodbye.